Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. January 21st, 2024. Let's get into it. So the first video was actually a video I made yesterday. Uh, but I was talking about the evil empire. And uh, what the United States has become. I mean, it's beyond my recognition of, of who and what we are. And so... What I was proposing that is maybe, you know, we've got the invasion of the body snatchers and, and they're putting these worms into the, the politicians' minds because I thought Mike Johnson was going to be, uh, you know, a, a lot better than, <laughs> than we had, you know, with, uh, well, of course, we got Mitch McConnell up in the Senate, but, you know, I mean, my God, look, look at who he replaced. Uh, McCarthy, right? So... I, I can't explain it. I can't explain the, the evil that our government has become. But let's, let's, let's watch the first video right now. So the last topic I wanted to get on to is what I call the evil empire. You know, back many years ago, I, it was always baffling to me because, you know, these politicians, it's hard to believe they're so slick. I could never be one. I just don't have the... the the quick thinking that you need. I mean, you know, it's amazing when you see Trump in an interview, he just, just rolls right along. I mean, I would be caught with, you know, a lot of those uh, questions or, or ad hominem arguments or whatever, you know, there's a lot of fallacies that the press uses to try to trap you into, uh, and I'd fall for that, I guarantee it. Because <laughs> I'm just not that, that, that quick on my feet, but I was wanting to get into the, the evil empire. So back then, you know, no matter who you elected, what was always shocking is that then they would they get in there and they would never live up to their promises. They would never vote the way that we wanted them to vote. They just pretended that they were going to vote that way. And then the next thing you know that the uh, Uniparty, the Republicans and the Democrats are just all voting together. And uh, But that seemed okay because for the most part, I felt like the federal government was there to try to help the American people a little bit, you know. Wasn't wasn't totally corrupt like it is today. But, uh, you know, then, you know, then you got, and of course, you also knew that a lot of them are blackmailed. They, it's easy to scrape up dirt on anybody. And the CIA and the FBI and the NSA, I'm sure they've got a lot of dirt on a lot of those politicians. The thing that always baffled me was I always thought that at least one or some of the politicians like Nancy Pelosi, let's just take her for example. I don't know how many millions of dollars. She's like worth 300 million, 400 million, whatever. But uh, of course, she's kind of a bad example, but not because of the wealth. I'm sure that many of the other uh, politicians are worth about the same amount. But you know, okay, so let's say that they do have dirt on me. Okay, at some point, let's say, you know, I'm a politician and I'm thinking, I don't want to vote this way, but I'm going to have to, otherwise they're going to expose this, that, and the other. Well, I might go along with that until I made enough money. And then, you know, I would take that money and I would hide it. You know, I'd get put it in places, because I'm sure that, you know, there's shady people that uh, can help you launder that money, put it someplace where the government can't get at it or take it out. And then I would vote my own way. And if they expose it, they expose it. You know, maybe my career's ended at that point, but what do I care? I go live on a desert island that I own and, and live out and, and, you know, get a dog and, go swimming and just have a good time and just leave politics behind that's what I would do you know and, and, and then know and sleep good at night because I did the right thing but I'm telling you right now it's like the government I'm thinking it's invasion of the body snatchers I've never seen such evil in the government I mean it's it's like and I always thought the Pentagon would be a balance to an out-of-control executive branch but they're in cahoots together which is what blows my mind. I mean, everybody's in cahoots together. The NSA, the CIA, the FBI, the, 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 the executive branch, Congress, hell, even the judiciary. I mean, it's like every facet of government now has turned against the people of the United States. And all they want to do is perpetrate evil around the world. They want war, 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 whether it's Republican or Democrat, mostly Democrats, though. Uh, there's a few Republicans that, that have spoke out against the war in Ukraine, not many. But uh, I mean, have you ever seen anything like it? And now we got this genocide taking place in Gaza. 
and they're all for it. In fact, they're going up there and they're saying bomb, bomb, bomb Iran. They want the regional conflict to expand. Netanyahu's already come out and said he's going to attack Hezbollah. So they want a full-fledged war in the Middle East. Can you imagine how many people are going to die? And I, they're all for it. So it just doesn't seem like there's a moral compass anywhere on Capitol Hill. And for, you know, for uh, white supremacy is the number one problem in the United States. Uh, the MAGA people all need to be in jail or they're all knuckle-dragging Neanderthals. I mean, have you ever heard such rhetoric coming out of Washington, D.C.? So that's why I said it's, in, it's in either the entire Manchurian administration or the Manchurian candidate. You know, we, we know that Biden is that. But I always thought there'd be some sort of check on the stupid. And they're not, these people are not stupid. They know what they're doing. I mean, at first, you know, you're thinking, wow, these people are really dumb. They're not dumb. They managed to get themselves elected. And then when they got there, they just went total rogue evil. And the same in Europe. Oh, my God. I've never seen anything like it. So you tell me if you feel the same way. It just seems to me that we've got aliens that have infected. I mean, look at Mike Johnson, for example. I thought for sure when we got rid of McCarthy, because I always considered him a rhino, that Mike Johnson would come in and, and do some good things. Now, I understand his hands are tied. He's only got, like, what, a two-seat majority or whatever. But I thought he'd be putting more pressure on, you know, at least taking care of the border. I thought that was going to be the big the big thing that, you know, to hold back funding for Ukraine. And, that, and that's another thing. How in the world did we end up with a government that really doesn't care a crap about the American people? All they care about is their foreign wars and their donors. I never thought I'd see it. I never thought I'd say that the entire uh, whole federal government is, is evil and they've all been captured in some kind of way. And I'm wondering if they've all got some sort of worm or alien virus or uh, you tell me. I mean, how, how else can you explain it? Okay, so... You know, I wanted you to see that, and uh, and then then I had you know I got to thinking about things, and 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 I had a follow up to that, but let let's watch that video now. I wanted to add to the invasion of the body snatchers, because I I can't explain it any other way, because it was not just the federal government when you think about it <clears throat> that's been captured. I never thought I would see such evil in the media, or lack of accountability. I mean, I don't even know what you call it. I mean, all they do is lie and, and propagandize the American people. I mean, it's, it's, it's just on steroids. You can't believe anything that any reporter that works for NBC or MSDNC or ABC or CBS. I mean, I'm, I never thought, or it used to be you could get some news out of BBC. That's no longer the case. How in the world did the whole, entire media, unless it's an alien virus or a worm in these people's heads, it captured the entire media. And then it captured the uh, the educational institutions. You know, not all of them, but a hell of a lot of them, especially the Ivy League schools. I mean, they're teaching communism there, Marxism. I mean, who would have ever thought, how in the world did all of these things get captured, unless it's an alien virus? You tell me, what's your theory? All right, so that's that's kind of my commentary for, for the video, and I just want to tell you, I mean, when, when you go into it, so what did Biden say? We had 400,000 people that were marching against the genocide, the genocide that's taking place in Gaza, and what were Biden's words? Let them march. <laughs> he doesn't give a shit about his Democrat voters. He doesn't give a shit about the American people. I mean, let them march, and that is the attitude in Germany. The farmers are protesting. And so I'm, what I'm telling you is you can get out there and you can ring your drums and you can blast your horns. I'm sorry, you know, the, the people we have in charge don't give a shit about your protests. They don't give a shit about you. They're all serving the globalist masters. I think they're all taken over by the invasion or alien uh, insects in their head. Uh, and, and no matter what you do, unless you're going to get into, well... A little more uh, like the American Revolution, let's just say. The American Revolution, what what happened there? Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. Just saying. Just saying. So, uh, anyway, that, that, that let them march was the, that's the most horrible thing I've ever heard. 
Uh, so Andivka is falling, and I already did a video about the uh, the bridgehead that the Ukrainians had. I mean, the the Russians are advancing all along the uh, the front lines there. Uh, we don't need to get into it too much. But you know what? I found this video, and I don't even know who this woman is. So this is, uh, but I wanted to put this video on because it's relevant. Because we just know that 60 uh, mercenaries, French mercenaries, were killed. And uh, who in the hell is Diane Sarr? She's in New York, uh, Orange County, New York. Let's watch her. It's U.S. Senate candidate Diane Sayem. Diane, thanks very much for joining us here on RT. Now, first of all, I just want to get your thoughts on, on Russia saying it's killed 60 French mercenaries. France denies it has any mercenaries abroad. What's your take? Well, I'm not sure why Russia would lie about that. I think there are all kinds of people who've gone into Ukraine and we don't really know. And I wonder if they're even actually mercenaries or some other deployment disguised as mercenaries. I think these are all questions that could be asked about this. Mm -hmm. Well, it comes as France has promised to supply more long-range scalp missiles to Ukraine, 40 of them, and will surely finalise a security deal with the country. But it also comes at a time where there's a huge question mark over continued US funding and support for Ukraine. Do you think that France and Europe more broadly could pick up the bill for any potential gap in US support? <laughs> Well, I doubt they're going to come up with $60 billion, although I noticed the UK came forward with a, a bunch of money. I, I would like to add also, nothing's really being said about the fact that Ukraine was shelling civilians in Belgorod, uh, which shows the kind of double standard that you have. Uh, there isn't support in the US for continuing to fund this war, especially with the problems domestically that we are facing. Well, President Mac Macron of France, he also said that he could work with President Trump, no, the former President Trump, if he's elected again. And that's despite the latter mocking his French accent. What do you think, if you were to speculate, a Trump victory in November would mean for the war in Ukraine? Well, I think Trump has said he would be committed to ending that. So I think he probably would figure out a way to do it. Uh, I hope that we stop sending money and weapons and the thing could be over before that time. I think the situation in the United States vis-a-vis -vis the presidential elections is rather unpredictable. Mm -hmm. And finally, Dan, next week we'll see the largest NATO exercise in decades with around 90,000 soldiers expected to be mobilized to deter what they call Russian aggression. Uh, what do you make of the timing and the move, and do you expect any response uh, from Russia to that? I am very impressed by the calm and rational conduct of President Putin in the face of many provocations. As you probably know, the London Daily Mail and some German newspapers have been <laughs> saying they've discovered absurd Russian timelines for a war against Europe, as Joe Biden was saying and trying to motivate his latest round of funding. Interestingly to me, the American politicians who I consider rather dumb sometimes were not dumb enough to buy that. So I think the West is increasingly desperate and I think the rest of the world, Russia and many other nations are beginning to see through the facade. Doesn't make us less dangerous, but I am hoping that we can get some changes where things can become more stable. Independent U.S. Senate candidate Dan Sayer, thanks very much for your take on that um, Russian claim that 40, 60 mercenaries in Ukraine were killed. Thank you. So that was three minutes. And I tell you, do you see that good people are rising to the occasion and good people are trying to make a difference? And, uh, I, you know, the thing is, she, she's not you know, dynamic. She's not. Well, she's pretty well spoken. I mean, but, you know, daggone it. I mean, I just. Just watching that three-minute video, I think, God knows, wouldn't she make a great person uh, if she ever got elected? Of course, they, they will never allow that. So let's get into a couple of uh, ex-posts. I'm, I'm under my bookmarks now. Uh, hold on. All right, so this is Geomon. I always follow, I mean, Geromon. 
As a result of the, an unexpected attack, the Russians broke through the defenses of the Ukrainian armed forces in the southern outskirts of, D, of, of Divka, A-V-D-I-I-V-K-A. In a few hours, the Russians managed to cover several, several kilometers. Uh, so we can see that uh, uh, Avdivka has fallen. That's good. Well, it's, it's going to fall. No, no, no doubt about it. Uh, this is Megatron. The Middle East has already entered a regional war. And uh, I, I'm on the fence about this, uh, but he does make a lot of good points, and so let's just go through what he says. If you remember a few months ago, the war and the massacre of civilian and children taking place in Gaza. How in the world, if you're a Christian, do you want 8,000 dead children in Gaza? What the F is wrong with you, man? But let's just get into his, uh, his post. Uh, the boo dog is squirming. Uh, <laughs> he don't like it when I do politics. At the time, officials from all sides declared that they did not want conflict to escalate into a regional war. Today, Hezbollah and Israel are constantly bombarding each other. Israeli bombs Syria targets senior Iranian officials. U.S. and U.K. target Yemen. The Houthis are targeting ships bound for Israel. Islamic militant organizations in Iraq and Syria target U.S. bases on a daily basis. And by the way, they hit them hard today. I told you that these U.S. bases that we've got, well, it, it, somebody said 400 bases. I, like I said, it was just I thought it was just 144 bases around the world. Who the fuck knows how many bases the United States Empire has around the world when the American people are homeless and we've got people starving on the streets and we're taking care of illegal immigrants at the sacrifice of the American people. Do you think the U.S. government represents you anymore? I don't think so. So Iran is targeting the Mossad and their creation, uh, creation ISIS because they bombed uh, Syria. And then the regional war is in full swing. That is a fact. So I tend to agree with them. I mean, it is pretty wild. Uh, this is Kim Iverson. Uh, and you know what? I, I totally agree with her. We are now the evil empire. The United States is now the evil empire. And so the reason I go into this, White House spokesman John Kirby says, we don't believe a ceasefire is going to be to the benefit of anybody but Hamas. So basically he's condoning the uh, extermination of the Palestinians. 30,000 dead now. Uh, the, the figures that are quoted on the news are 25,000. But no, I'm watching the 2,000 pound bombs that the freaking Democrat, the homicidal, the this. The psychopath Democrats providing Israel on a daily basis drop on the civilians with, well, I mean, we're probably at 10,000 dead kids in Gaza. And the American people are going along with this? I, oh, my God, don't get me started. All right, so let's keep going. OSINT Defender. I think this is actually a government channel. <laughs> but, but you know what? I, you got to follow both sides, right? So uh, he says the, the MIM-104 Patriot surface-to-air missile battery at the Al-Assad Air Base in western Ukraine, Iraq excuse me, was reportedly overwhelmed today during the rocket and or ballistic missile attack. And then, of course, they always say it's Iranian-backed forces. These, uh, yes, of course Iraq is providing them, I mean, Iran's providing them weapons, but... Iran has no say over... I, this is how the, the, the media twists everything. Yes, Iran gives them weapons. How they use them, Iran has no say over that. So, you know, obviously we're leading up to a war because that's what the neocons want. Uh, the Biden, the, the warmongering, bloodthirsty, bloodthirsty Democrats want a war with Iran. But anyway, let's just keep going. Um, Iran back forces with the battery claimed to have launched at least 15... Uh, of its Pac-2 missiles, resulting in several interceptions. Now, I talked about this in many videos. We have a limited supply of any, uh, you know, any aircraft defenses or anti-missile defenses, or even on the ships. So, the U.S. supply is being exhausted, and there there are 
are Ukraine, I mean, uh, European countries talking about the fact that they got no weapons left. They've given, they've given everything to Ukraine because they're puppets of the United States. And the United States says, give everything to Ukraine. We got to defeat the Russians. Well, it, 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 that ain't working out too well. So this is, uh, this is, well, and we talked about that video. And this is just 60 French mercenaries were killed in the uh, huge Kharkov strike, even the French ambassador was forced to come to Moscow on this account, and now a German journalist gives his take. And so this is pretty interesting. I just thought, because this adds to that video that I was just, just showed you of that woman, who would make a great candidate? But let's just keep going. Western media silent on Russian strikes on mercenaries in Kharkov, says German journalist Thomas Ropier, in video above, describing total censorship of details on number killed in Western media, with such outlets repeating Kiev's line of just a few injuries at best. Do you see how the, the media suppresses everything? If you're watching this video, you're actually getting news that nobody else in the world is getting, especially in Great Britain. They, they, they don't know a damn thing about what's going on. But let's keep going. There is already information that many of them are running in shock, when they see what is happening on the Ukrainian side, they don't talk about this at all. Western media is just covering up the news. It's becoming widely known. And, and what he was saying is that this will demotivate mercenaries <laughs> from going to Ukraine. I can't believe they were stupid enough to go there in the first place. I mean, when I was younger, I always kind of thought about being a mercenary and what it would be like, you know. And But the thing is, always governments betray you as a mercenary. Holy shit. So then we get into uh, this, this next, um, a new Slovak defense minister. Due to the transfer, this is what I was talking about. Okay, so I, I'm glad I, I got this one up. So due to the transfer of weapons to Ukraine by the previous government, our country was left without air defense and combat aircraft. The West even promised to give us 700 million euros in compensation, donating 13 mig. 29 fighters to Ukraine, and so far we have, haven't received anything. So that's the Slovak, the new, the new government that's in uh, Slovakia. He's saying they're defenseless because <laughs> they've given all their weapons to Ukraine. Oh my God! And of course, they, they, the U.S. twisted their arm. Uh, Rip Gonzalo, I just got back from Ukraine where I was visiting some friends. Everything we have heard about what's happening in Ukraine is a lie. The reality is darker, bleaker, and unequivocally hopeless. There is no such thing as Ukraine winning this war. So this is uh, Maria, I can't pronounce this, M-A-T-E-I-C-I-U-C. By their estimates, that they've lost over one million of their sons, fathers, husbands, and an entire generation is gone. Well, I told you that a while back. I mean... Colonel McGregor, I guess he just wants to be conservative. He says 500,000. Well, I've been watching the news. It was 500,000 six months ago. <laughs> I mean, the Russians are killing the Ukrainians by the thousands every day. You know, so don't tell me that. Yeah, so the million sounds about right. Even in the Southwest, where the anti-Russian sentiment is longstanding, citizens are reluctant or straight up scared to publicly criticize Zelensky. They will go to jail. In every village and town, the streets, shops, and restaurants are mostly absent of men. The few men who remain are terrified of leaving their homes for fear of being kidnapped into conscription. Some have resorted to begging friends to break their legs to avoid service. Can that be real? I mean, I, I, holy shit, I'm not sure I would break my legs. I... Well, I mean, I, I, I would buy some camp. Well, like, right now it's 20 below. <laughs> and do you think, and that was another thing I wanted to talk about was the Ukrainian soldiers, they are suffering immensely. I, I mean, the Russians, they've got all their equipment. They, they've got the logistics. They've got the supply lines. So they're being well supplied. I mean, granted, at 20 below zero, do you think that they're suffering down in their uh, trenches, you know, underground, uh, with their the holes dug in the ground, no, they're suffering too. But I mean, can you imagine what the Ukrainian soldiers are going through? They don't have the supplies, and many of them are freezing to death right now. And uh, I imagine it, when this thing all pans out, we're going to find out that thousands of Ukrainian soldiers are just stiff, frozen corpses uh, on their side of the the fight. So. 
Army search party fight parties take place every early in the morning when men leave their homes to go to work. They ambush and kidnap them off the streets, and within three to four hours, they get listed in the army and taken away straight to the front lines with minimal or no training at all. It's a death sentence. It's getting worse every day. Where I was standing, a dentist had just seen was just being taken by security forces on his way to work, leaving behind two small children every day, three to five dead bodies. This is what the American people want? How evil are we as a nation? What the freak is wrong with the Democrats? What's wrong with our government? What's wrong with, with everything that we're doing in the world? We're exterminating the Palestinians. And yet people in the United States like Mark Levin Kill the Palestinians! Kill them all! Kill them all! Oh my God, mothers and wives fight tooth and nail with the armed forces, beg and plead not to have their men taken away. They take try bribing, which sometimes works, but most of the time they are met with physical violence and death threats. The territory celebrated as having been won back from Russia has been reduced to rubble and is uninhabitable. Have you seen some of the pictures that I put up on my videos? We're going to get some more, uh, you know, the, the, the towns are just rubble at this point. The war needs to come to an end, but nobody wants to talk to the Russians. All you got to do is talk to them. Do you think the Russians want to continue the war? Hell no. They just want to, uh, they just want their demands met. They want the denazification of Ukraine. They don't want NATO on their border with uh, nuclear missiles. And they want a government that's neutral. That's all they want. I mean, how difficult would that be to do? I mean, you could pick up the phone tomorrow and make it all happen. Oh, my God. The territory celebrated as being won back from Russia has been reduced to rubble and is uninhabitable. Okay. Oh, I could read on and on and on. I, this was the greatest tweet ever. I, I can't make this video too long because people won't watch it. So anyway, um, I guess we'll cut it right there and I'll save the rest of the, the videos that I had for tomorrow. <clears throat> but I wanted to tell you, I mean, we are the evil empire. Peace out. Stay free.